Let me start by telling you why we're interested in nursing homes. Uh, here's a picture from my home state of Connecticut. This is since March deaths by day for people not living in congregate settings, so people out in the community. And you can see my state, Connecticut, is one of the harder hit states. But this is the picture of the number of deaths in congregate settings, which is largely driven by nursing homes. Long-term care facilities, which include nursing homes in the US, account for about 40% of US COVID deaths. Now, I think many people might recognize that and say, well, this is a fragile population. And of course, conditional on infection, the death rates in nursing homes are going to be high. I think what's been discussed less is how shockingly high the infection rates in nursing homes have been. Here's a picture of resident cases per 1,000 residents by state from the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, which is the primary regulator of nursing homes. You can see from this picture that in Connecticut, Massachusetts, and New Jersey, more than 30% of the nursing home population has become infected. That is a shockingly high number. And the infections are not limited just to residents. Uh, the regulator in New York has estimated that 25% of nursing home staff in that state have become infected. We're talking about the U.S. here and our data is from the U.S., but the problem of COVID in nursing homes is a problem which has been identified worldwide. Now, given that we know this is a fragile population, of course, efforts were made to protect this population early on in the nursing in the COVID crisis. Uh, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services way back in March recognized that nursing homes were vulnerable and issued guidance restricting visitation in nursing homes. So with visitors not able to enter nursing homes from March, uh, that would, should help protect visitors, but of course uh, should help protect residents, but of course we know that infections took place in nursing homes nonetheless. So what is the break in this bubble uh, of the nursing homes? How could SARS-CoV-2 get into nursing homes? Well, one likely answer is unwittingly staff and contractors who come and go from the nursing home brought uh, coronavirus in. We know that nursing homes have suffered from limited PPE and limited testing of staff and contractors. In this paper, what we identify as particularly dangerous is the potential for cross movement of staff of cross nursing homes. So if you have a nursing home that has no infections and you have workers who are working in a nursing home with infections, that is very likely to be a dangerous situation. And we know that cross deployment of staff is very common. So approximately 60% of nursing homes use a staffing agency and staffing agencies are designed to help nursing homes cross deploy staff. And we also know that nursing assistance is a very low paid profession. And uh, an, an earlier study shows that approximately 19% of nursing assistants hold a second job. Early in the crisis, the cross movement of staff was identified as a potential source of problem. In particular, for example, the CDC in evaluating the Kirkland, Washington outbreak uh, in March 2020 wrote a report in which they identified that staff members working in more than one facility led to the spread of uh, SARS-CoV-2 from the Kirkland facility to other nursing homes in the state. Despite the early identification of this as a potential problem, as far as we know, there is no data set that measures cross deployment of staff, measures cross traffic across nursing homes, and no, in fact, regula regulation that speaks directly to this problem. So this is what we set out to measure in this paper. How do we do this? So to measure cross traffic, we first hand assemble data on cases from state departments of public health. We're going to use that as well as data from the federal regulator CMS. We'll use the CMS data for robustness, but unfortunately the CMS did not require reporting until May and reporting of May 1st cases by nursing homes to CMS was optional. So the state data is for a subset of states, but is more complete. 
We're going to take our state data and match it to the CMS database of nursing homes in order to obtain a robust set of nursing home characteristics. We're going to be looking at CMS quality ratings, home demographics, records of inspection violations, and importantly from CMS, we'll get the official address of the nursing home. This is what we're going to use to measure cross traffic. So exactly how do we do this? Here's a picture, satellite picture of a nursing home near my house. We first take the address and use the Google API to find a longitude and latitude point for each nursing home. Then we're going to use a, a commercially available satellite image shapefile in order to, to measure exactly the perimeter of each nursing home. And from that perimeter of each nursing home, we'll be measuring cell phone pings in that nursing home. We're going to use anonymized smartphone data from Veriset on 30 million smartphones. And we identify 509,000 smartphones that, that, that ping in at least one US nursing home in that six week period of March 13th to April 23rd after the shutdown of nursing homes to visitors. So these are likely not visitors that we're seeing, but these, these, are, these are smartphones that we're seeing visiting uh, in nursing homes. What do we find? Well, we find that 7% of the smartphones that enter one nursing home enter more than one nursing home. So even a priori, we, we know this is a dangerous potential situation in that uh, nursing homes are so vulnerable. We also look at how much cross traffic there is among nursing homes. So this is a picture of the degree of contact among nursing homes. So this is the number of other nursing homes to which a nursing home is connected on the x-axis and the frequency that we see that number of connections on the y-axis. So you can see that there's a large number of nursing homes, high frequency of nursing homes with a very small number of connections, but having a lot of connections does occur. In yellow, we have the nursing homes with no COVID cases as of mid-May from the CMS data. And in blue, we have the nursing homes with COVID cases. You can see that on average, uh, the nursing homes with no COVID cases tend to have fewer connections than the nursing homes with COVID cases. And of course, that's what we want to look at systematically. In order to look at that systematically, we want some measures of the connectedness of nursing homes. We, we'd use degree in the last figure, but there are other measures that have been identified by the network literature. This is a picture of a complex nursing home network in Connecticut. The dot size here is proportional to the number of cases. So these little dots are nursing homes that actually have no cases. The strength of the connection is color coded. So if it's light, not many smartphones are shared between the nursing homes, but some. And if it's dark, there are more smartphones being observed in a pair of nursing homes. We look at this focal nursing home here in blue. This nursing home is interesting because it doesn't, relative to the average in the state, have a lot of strong connections to other nursing homes, but the nursing homes it's connected to are themselves very highly connected nursing homes. And using the language of networks, uh, this nursing home actually has high eigenvector centrality in the state. So I'm not going into details, but this is one of the measures of network connectedness that we use in the paper. So what do we do? We look at the covariates of COVID-19 cases within nursing homes. Specifically, we calculate the inverse hyperbolic sign of the number of cases in each nursing home, which is a log-like transform, which is useful to use when you have a number of, uh, a lot of observations with zeros. Um, this specification that we use is very similar to a specification that some previous researchers have used to look at the, the, the covariates of COVID-19 cases in nursing homes. So specifically, we include measures of the CMS quality rating, we include home demographics, and we include state fixed effects. So we're really looking at within state, 
because states differ so much in their overall level of infection, within state, what are the predictors of nursing homes with more cases? We also have an urban indicator. These are measures that have been used in the previous literature, but we add to that our various measures of network connectedness. So we talk about degree, which is the number of connections, um, as I talked about before, strength, which is number of connectors within each connection. And then this measure of eigenvalue centrality um, that I tried to describe in the picture from Connecticut. We find that all of these measures of connectedness when used together with these other measures of um, nursing home, uh, potential covariates of nursing home cases are highly predictive of nursing home cases. Overall, we find that if we shut down all connections, that predicts an astonishing 44% reduction in cases from our point estimates. Now, of course, this is a cross-sectional observational regression, um, but which has limitations. But we point out that this is an environment in which a randomized control trial is unlikely to be either ethical or feasible. And this kind of evidence we think is important in forming policy. Our basic results qualitatively are robust to substituting the state data for CMS data, for replacing the state fixed effects with county fixed effects, and with using a specification in which we don't count the number of cases, but rather use a zero one for whether the nursing home has cases or not. We find our network variables to be important predictors of cases in all of these specifications. Importantly, and consistent with some previous researchers, we find that the CMS regulatory measures do not actually predict cases, that these connectedness measures and home demographics are much more um, important in predicting cases. Finally, we conclude that this is an urgent problem, particularly in states where cases are continuing to grow. Nursing homes are still vulnerable, and there's a variety of ways in which um, uh, regulators could think about attempting to protect this population. Uh, we don't make specific recommendations in the paper, but some considerations are PPE, more aggressive testing, and of course, compensation of nursing home workers to compensate them to work only one job in only one home. 